Q, what else we got? What's another question? How can founders identify the early signs of burnout in themselves and their teams? Burnout, early signs. It, you know, it, sometimes it, it, burnout creeps up on you. Typically, you don't recognize that you're burning out until you're literally at burnout. Um, so a, an early sign would be that you're you're not getting rest. I think that's that's step one, that you're not sleeping. And I think step two is that other people are asking you if you're okay. If, if you have people that are asking you if you're okay, it might be time to check in and see if you actually are okay. Wow, that's actually a good one. You know, it makes sense because, you know, you may have a lull in performance, but that just might be a factor of other things. But if you're not taking care of yourself, but at the same time, Jake, I'm sure you heard this. And this is the thought that goes through my mind. It's the same thing. I'm dealing with high blood pressure right now. Mm -hmm. And my doctor says to me, by the time you feel the effects of high blood pressure, it's too late, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to correlate that, compare that to what you just said. But is, isn't it okay to pull overnighters like these long days? Isn't it like part of hustle culture where we are saying, you know what, it's a badge of honor that we're not sleeping. It's a badge of honor that we are burning the candles on both ends and the middle. What would you say to that prevailing mentality, that psychology that seems to seep into startups? You know, I, I'd say that there's a time and a place for it. Sometimes it is, you, sometimes you have to. Sometimes there is a sprint, a short period of time where you are gonna stay up late or you are gonna work really hard, but then you have to take the time to actually take care of yourself and recover from that. Because if you do it for too long, it's you're, you're not gonna be able to function and all that work that you put in isn't gonna matter. Um, so I, I would say that while it's, it's a part of the culture, you just gotta be careful. I think that there's ways that you can do it, be extremely productive without losing yourself in the process. How do you do that? Like, let's give some examples. L let's say we've detected burnout. People are asking us and you think to yourself, you know what? I think I'm burnt out. What would you do? Step one is identify areas that I can cut to give me, give me a break. You know, who can, who can I automate del or what can I automate, delegate or eliminate to get some stuff off of my plate, focus on my number one or in two priorities every day, and just be able to, to have a people support me in that. Now, if you're a solo entrepreneur, it's harder. It is. Now, there's things like AI or automated systems and things that you can use. I'd say that step one is there. Step two is actually taking time off. And I know, again, it's really hard as a founder to do that. But if that just means taking a weekend off instead of just continuing to, to burn through the weekend, do that. Um, but I personally try to take rest during the day. It doesn't mean that I'm, I'm necessarily you know, taking a full day off of rest, but just incorporating it into moments of my day, making it a a lifestyle instead of a um, a thing that it's like, oh, I have to wait until I get to a vacation or a weekend to, to rest. So go on walks. You know, we're talking 15, 30 minutes. You're going to be more productive after the walk anyway. Um, so adding things that give you energy throughout the week is, uh, I think, really important. You can also disrupt your patterns. Like one of the ways that I've been dealing with it lately is right now, like this set right here, my bedroom is right there. Like I'm totally spilling the tea on this. My bedroom's <laughs> behind me. And it's because I've got kids that are still at home and they're the teens. And my wife uses a whole bonus room under herself. My kids need to have their own room and the family room and the main <laughs> dining room, which you don't have a dining table in there anymore. And so I've just chosen to say, let them use all that space. But if I get up and I roll out of bed and I just go right at my desk, then I face potential consequences of just run running out like the gas runs out the tank. So what I've been doing is I've been saying, I'm going to start my morning by going downstairs, taking my vitamins, hanging out at the kitchen table. And I just disrupt my patterns just a little bit. And that's something that you can do, not just incorporate rest, but then also disrupt some of the normal things that you're doing. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to bring up was it's a great concept. Jacob, I want you to comment on this. The ability to say no is mm. so important to know K and O W what your no's are and O's you must, or to know what your yeses are, you must know what your no's are. Right. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Once you start, and I hope people listen to this and I'm on the back nine, everyone. So I've experienced multiple times of burnout and these cycles, but once you say no, the number of your no's as they increase, the quality of your yeses will also increase, right? Yeah. And Brenda here in the audience, I saw it in chat, just popped up. The ability to say no and not having to qualify. Now, Brenda, thank you so much for having that co comment. Now, let me go off the beaten path just a little bit. One of the ways that I've had to protect myself in the position I've been in, I've been in situations where every week, everybody wants to meet with me, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll go to a conference or I'll give a talk 
I'll share, I'll be in the public spotlight. And, and the, the worst part is my introvert coming out. They come out and they want to have lunch with me, all these things. And I had to say no, because I can't say yes to everyone. But then if I said no, I'm booked for something else or no, I'm doing this. They could question me and judge me. And they sort of look at me like, what, am I not as important or all these things or they do that. So then I learned just as Brenda is talking about, and, and Brenda, I'm sure you have tons of experience with this, is just to say, no, my schedule does not allow it. Awkward silence, let them walk away. That's <laughs> it, right? Because you spend so much energy and you can burn yourself out by trying to justify that. And the more I say no, the things I say yes to, I automatically do better at them. And we talk about productivity and focus. That actually does more than compensate for the stuff I've said no to. And that's what I've learned is I, I say no to so much more. And I just say yes to things I know that I can have a lot of impact and good ROI. What are your thoughts? Like you got to be seeing this happen all over the place. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, that is that is the, the natural state of the founder is to have too much on their plate and have too many people asking them for time. Um, so, you know, how do you how do you do that? You have to prioritize. You have to and sometimes it has to be as, as direct as creating rules for yourself of I have to, I will say no to everything except for this, this, and this. And, you know, sometimes you have to go through periods of that. It doesn't mean that you have to do it all the time, but at least for stretches of time when you're really busy, then yes, it is, it is important to protect your time because going back to your vision, how are you going to achieve your vision? You actually have to have the time to focus and work on your highest leverage activities. Let's make this super real for you founders out there who are raising money or are building a startup. You should be saying no to everything except two things, building your product, talking to your users. The thing that burns founders out right from the beginning because it keeps stacking up is saying yes to go on podcasts. Ironically <laughs> speaking, just even this, but running around, going to those events, those quote networking things where you feel mm. really great because you're talking about it, in the beginning, those are all a big fat waste of time. And just like Jacob said, the quality, like you're, you're not going to be able to execute against that vision if you're saying yes, and you can get distracted so often. Mm -hmm. So your nose have to be super clear, which is pretty much everything else except build your product, talk to users, and then you add in one more yes, tell investors about it and how you're doing the first two if you're going to be raising capital. So that's the way we're just going to make this very applicable for those of you who are raising funds as we do here at stops.com. We want to help out 